Hi everyone, today is April 1st, 2020. I'm gonna take you through our workout today. It's five rounds per time of 25 calories for men, 20 calories for women, 15 suitcase deadlifts, and one minute of two-handed dumbbell hold overhead um, for time. With our workout today, we have a few scaling options, whether you're scaling based off of ability level or scaling based off of the equipment you have. Uh, so we're gonna warm up to prep our workout to establish our standards and our, our weight and our, our equipment. So with the warm up, we're gonna go through two rounds. We're gonna hit the cardio up, we're gonna use the um, dumbbells for the deadlifts or whatever, we're gonna establish our deadlifts and we're gonna establish that overhead hold. So with the cardio, for the workout, we're looking for about two minutes worth of effort. Um, that's gonna be about 25 calories on the rower. The rower is going to be the uh, focus for today. If you have a rower, that would be great. So if, once again, it's gonna be 25 calories for men and 20 calories for women. If we have a bike, but we don't have a rower, that's fine, you can use a bike as well. I personally used a bike earlier this morning. Um, and again, we're looking for 25 calories for men, 20 calories for women. And then if we don't have any uh, equipment, then we, we wanna to try to get out there on the run. Uh, today's gonna to be the day that we're gonna to try to stick to those three. So if you're able to just get out on the run, that'd be great. Um, either walk or, or crawl or whatever you can do uh, to get up and back um, for this workout. If we're gonna to run today, it's gonna to be a 400 meter run. If we don't have any um, markers or anything like that, we're looking for about two minutes of effort on the cardio, okay? So once again, it's gonna be two minutes effort, whether you're rowing, biking, or running. Um, and again, if you need uh, a unit of measurement, it's gonna be 25 calories, 20 calories and for biking and rowing and 400 meters for the run. Then the next thing is gonna be the two-handed uh, suitcase deadlifts, okay? If you have two dumbbells, that would be ideal for today. Uh, earlier today, I did not have two dumbbells, so what I ended up using was one dumbbell and one kettlebell, which is fine, okay? Uh, Weight-wise, we wanna be able to manage 15 reps in a row. So we're not gonna to look to go over 50 pounds on the dumbbells. So we're looking to set ourselves up as if we were doing a deadlift, feet underneath the hips, okay? Hands are gonna be outside your legs, back's gonna stay flat, hips are gonna be below the knees, tension in your hamstrings, shin vertical. From here, you're gonna create tension in your belly, take a deep breath, and pick up the object, okay? Reach down, touch the ground, and stand. In today's workout, when you reach down and grab the dumbbell, it's a little bit longer of a distance than it is a barbell. So some people have a tendency to round that back out. If you find that you're doing this, we're gonna have some scaling options. But before we do that, you wanna do your best to try to keep your back as flat as possible. Keep this tension up, okay? Squeeze your chest up and try to grab onto your dumbbells, okay? We're gonna have that extension and that reach. If you find that that's very difficult, when you do your deadlift, just lower the dumbbells Pass your shins while maintaining a flat back and then squeeze all the way up. So once again, you don't want to go too far if you're if you cannot keep that tension in your lower back. So again, suitcase deadlifts. We're looking like we're picking up two pairs of suitcases. Um, if we don't have um, dumbbells, you can just stick to your conventional deadlifts. So you can also choose to use a barbell for your deadlift. So the deadlift, you're gonna start with your shin vertical, hips above the knee, tension your hamstrings, you're gonna push the ground, stay all the way up in front of that, and then bring it back down. With the weight on the deadlift, we don't wanna to go too heavy. We have 15 reps for each round, okay? And 15 reps times five equals to about a lot of uh, reps with volume. Uh, so you wanna make sure you're keeping the weight light, okay? Um, I use 50 pound dumbbells and kettlebells, so we're looking for something around 100 pounds or so. Uh, with the barbell, if you're using a barbell, you're going to want to go with 135 pounds. So the next thing on the agenda is going to be the overhead hold, okay? We're going to look to take a pair of dumbbells, that would be ideal, and to lock and load it overhead. When you're locking and loading or load overhead, you're going to want to start from the ground up and build a strong foundation. So with your feet, you're going to keep your feet underneath the hips, okay? Keep your legs nice and straight. We're going to create tension in our legs. We create tension in our legs by activating our quads, squeezing our glutes. Okay, and then keeping our belly down. And then from here, we're gonna have the weight and we're gonna press it up and overhead. If you've been a part of our classes and you've done our warm ups, uh, we call it a press and reach. So with the press and reach, you're actually pressing the palm of your hand into the sky as hard as possible. 
So you're going to want to think about that as you're pressing this bar, barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell, whatever weight you're pressing overhead and holding, just hold it overhead by pressing up into the sky and stabilizing. What we want, what we don't want to do is to start to create this zigzag position, okay? So you want to think about uh, points on your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder, your hip, your knee, and your ankle. And you want to create one straight line down into the ground. When you have a zigzag position, okay, that's not good for the body. Okay, so we want to make sure we're stabilizing that weight overhead. Okay, so if you want to use dumbbells, kettlebells, okay, that would be ideal. Um, if you're not, I actually did a barbell, you can use a barbell to stabilize overhead. We're still uh, going to scale a little further with stabilization by working on some gymnastics. So if you're able to kick up into the wall and hold yourself upside down, that would be ideal. With the kick up, you're going to establish a weak foot, place your hands on the ground, and you're going to kick with that back foot to get that leg and your body upside down. When upside down, we're still looking for that vertical position, okay? Establish pressing your palms into the ground and trying to hold yourself upside down. If we're unable to kick upside down, we can do a walk. So for the walk time, get your feet up onto the wall, get your body into one straight line, make sure you're looking at your belly button and hold yourself upside down. So those are your options when stabilizing overhead. If you find that you're able to hold yourself or hold weight overhead for over 30 seconds, you can choose to do 10 strict presses, whether it be with dumbbells, kettlebells, barbell, or an empty backpack, or not, not, not an empty backpack, I'm sorry, with a loaded backpack, okay? So there are, those are your options for that overhead position. So again, we have five rounds for time. We're looking at a 25 minute cap, so we wanna do less than five minutes per round. And again, you have the two minutes of cardio, the 15 deadlifts, and the weight, holding the weight overhead, okay? This is a good workout for today. I did this workout earlier this morning. It was a nice uh, cardio, I actually used a bike. It was a good cardio piece to get the lungs going. Uh, a little bit more uh, of a stimulus on the legs with the deadlifts. And then stabilizing that load overhead was very challenging. So it's a unique workout, okay? So uh, attack it, have a good time with it, and let me know how it goes.